In the great port of Rangoon, in a hut near the docks on a straw pallet, Mountoon was born 24 years ago. His mother fell ill, and it was not until seven years later that she gave birth to her second son. Then, without difficulty, came the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Mountoon's father worked on the docks, loading the ships with rice, teak, and oil. One day, a thief stole the father's wages. The neighbors came to console him. But Mountoon's father said no, the man was no doubt in desperate need, else a man would not steal. I am unhappy only that it was my money which provided his temptation. Mountoon was 12 when his father died. His mother took up sewing, and each year she held a memorial service for the needle she had broken during the year. This pious woman taught her sons that the heart which looks up in gratitude to Buddha is filled with love and kindness to all beings, indeed even to a tree or a blade of grass by the roadside. She taught them mutual respect, the protection of lower animals, and the care of even a grain of wheat or a sheet of paper. Mountun was 16 when his mother died. So to feed and educate his brothers, he went to sea. The neighbor said it was no life for a Buddhist. But Mountun said, no, it is an opportunity to bring the word of Buddha to those living far away. I'm pregnant. My husband works nights. I saw the door open, so, so I just looked in. It's a miracle I still have my baby. What time was that? A couple of minutes before 9.30. It was the last commercial. So, oh, this is bad for me. He hasn't shipped out in four or five months, just hanging around. I see him always come home looped. A real fall down drunk. And he wasn't like that before. Never had much to do with anybody, but always nice. How do you do, you know? You know yelling at his wife a lot lately. A voice like a foghorn. Well, the, the walls are kind of thin here. Drunk and hollering. Him hollering, her trying to calm him yeah, down. Yeah, we upstairs lots of times, and uh, finally we said, nuts, let him lay. Except when it's raining. That kind of drinking, boy.
doesn't even know yet, Mike. I'll bet. One deep stab wound. Probably severed the aortic artery. Time about nine. Nine fifteen. Stabbing took place over the door. She moved from there to this point where she collapsed. There's a trail of blood stains. Did they find the knife? If you're referring to the knife collection on the wall, Mike, there's dust on all of them. Bad housekeeper, huh? Okay, Doc, thanks. She was moving away from her husband, trying to make it to the door. He caught up with her at the door. You don't buy that, huh? No. Why? Because he was drunk? Did you ever hear of a guy killing his wife in a drunken stupor? Mike, in the first place, where's the knife? And in the second place, come here. Bad light, huh? Now, suppose, Mike, I turn out all these lights in here and just leave that one lamp over there burning. Because that's the only lamp that was lit when we came here. And you were at the door, and I came to answer the door. Well, you wouldn't be able to see my face. You wouldn't know who I was. I wouldn't think you were a woman. But wait a minute. Mrs. Barris has a short haircut. She was wearing a man's shirt and a pair of blue jeans. Who was she mistaken for? I don't know. Maybe her husband. You mean somebody was after her husband and killed her by mistake? You trying to tell me that your guess is better than my guess? Mike, I just don't believe the man did it. Come here, I want to read something to you. Now, this is a letter that the captain wrote to his wife, Mike. There's a whole box full of them here, she's been saving them. Destiny is a stinker. Most of my life without you, together such a short time. And now my nightmare is dying away from you in some oil-stained port amid strangers. Amid strangers? Sentiment is cheap. On paper, 5,000 miles away. Do not forsake me, oh my God. You like a beautiful picture of yourself, sir. My name is Marlton. Yeah? Gloria is my friend. Oh. The, the last time I saw Gloria was a long time ago. Eight months ago. Some friend. I was on a ship. She's upstairs in the dark room. Right outside, first door to the right. Two flights up. Thank you very much. I have shaved away my beard. I'm sorry, where was it when? I am Mangton. Well, uh, you look much better without your beard. But I don't remember you, honey. Stingy boy? Oh, for Pete's sakes! <laughs> well, come on in out of the doorway. Give me the name again. Mongton. I remember. You ate fish and rice while we all feasted. Have you mended your way? I... I have some money. 
Well, you had money then, too, but you ate rice and fish. You still got those eyes. Those sad, wet eyes. And you know I do like you better without your curly beard. So down, stingy boy. What'd you have in mind? To be with you? I have money. We, we, we can go any place you say. I'm working, honey. It's in there. Oh, and that long hair. Where'd you say you were from again? Indonesia? Burma. Oh, that's right. Tell me, what you do that night, you silly nut? Go back to the ship? Yes. And you've been thinking all this time how foolish that was. I have thought of you many times. Stingy little wet eyes. Too bad, doll, I have to work. Do you make much money in a night? Sometimes Mary and I spend a fast 15, 16 bucks. I'll give you that. Then you won't have to work tonight. And you'll take me out and buy me some rice and fish? Anything you like. Oh, don't get rash. I have some money. How much money is some money? Three hundred dollars. And you're willing to spend it all? Yes. Easy come, easy go, huh? You probably work months for that. I wouldn't let you throw all that money away. But you know what? Oh, I got this sick mother in San Francisco. I've been crazy figuring how to get back there. I'll give you the money. You know how much plane fare is? Over a hundred dollars, honey. All right. Mary? Mary? Yonk? Take the night off. Pig. I'm sorry I called you tight what? You probably had to save your money. Things aren't too lovely in Burma, huh? I know about self-denial. It's, it's a blip, right, baby? There's no reason to save money. Money I will now use for pleasure. I have seen what there is to be had in the world. I want to have what's good. Am I good? Don't make a, a joke of yourself. You're good. Hey, Frank, is Hal out there? Yeah. Ask him to come in with you. Hal, keep an eye on him. That guy stopped crying yet? Yeah, I think we can talk to him now. Anything specific in his background you want to cover? He is a ship's captain. J. Bore Shipping Lines, which belongs to Master's Mates and Pilots Union. Got uh, involved in some kind of a Coast Guard investigation about five months ago. Started drinking, kept it up since then. Hasn't shipped out again either. Is he grounded? Nope. License valid. J. Bore Shipping Lines. That's who he works for. Make a note to see someone over at the J. Bore Shipping Lines. Yes, sir. 
Anything specific you want to cover in this interrogation? I think I just played by ear. marriage for sailors. I, it's unfair. Too much separation. I've seen too many sad things. I never believed in it. Do you understand you're under suspicion here, Captain? You're entitled to a lawyer? She was sick when I met her. And I took care of her. For months, hospital. I took care of her. I'm a fairly good fellow. She was an angel. An angel. She made me go to church. I'd lost a toe. There was an explosion on the ship. She made me go to church to thank God it was only a toe. You know, she was killed by accident, don't you? Somebody wanted me. Well, I'm going to see about him. Who? I want to know the name of the man you're talking about. Captain, it's easy to point to somebody else. Some anonymous somebody else. That doesn't let you off the hook, Captain. What about the hollering? What about the reason for shouting at your wife tonight, just a half an hour before she was killed? I never shouted at Betty. Not at her. I didn't want her to comfort me, that's all. I didn't want her sympathy or a consolation. Consolation for what? Now look, I've seen death. I've seen lots of it. I've seen men drown. I've seen them in the engine room when the ball gets hit. I've seen them in the streets of China and India, dead of starvation. I've seen men shot. No man is a saint. I have seen the filth of this world. I've wallowed in some of it. Are any of you without sin? I didn't shout at Betty. She knew what I was shouting at. He came to kill me. Why did he come to kill you? No. I killed my wife. In a way, I did. Things a man does in this life has echoes. A stone in the water. Ripples. I asked you a question. No. I'm going to have to put you in jail, Captain. If there is such a man, you won't get to him. And if you don't tell me his name, I may never get to him either. What are you going to do? Funny. You build your life. Solid structure, good, strong beams, respect, achievement, friendship. For 47 years you live in that structure. A proud tenant of yourself. And in one minute, one day, there's nothing left except to kill that man. No, you want to take that away, too. Captain, even if you do get out of jail, we'll have you followed. You won't get to him. He was my first mate. His name is... Follinger, Emery. He lives at... 723 West 25th Street.
No. Hello. I will come back. You know something, Boba boy? A person could fall in love with you. How many girls have been in love with you? None. How many girls have you loved? All my love was given to my brothers. I returned home from a voyage across 10,000 miles of ocean. My brothers were dead. I will come back. the apartment. He came to the ambulance. I asked him about the captain here. He said he and the captain had a fight a little bit earlier, but he didn't think the captain did this. Actually, the captain didn't did this. The captain's with us. Foranger says, and I quote, the captain's a nut. when you're asked. Who stabbed you? I don't know. I, I was asleep. I answered the door and I get stabbed. A man stabbed you and you saw him. I was asleep. He hired somebody, didn't you? He sent him to kill me and he killed Betty. Who'd want to kill you? You were dead months ago. Ah, sit down! Sit down! Has it ever occurred to you that maybe somebody wants to kill both of you? Come on, let's go outside. Get him out of here. I want to know what that fight was about. He hates me. He hates easily. What was that fight about? I went to him. Well, Betty forced me to go. We went together. I said to him, let's stop this. Let's help each other. Well, he mistook humility for weakness. He insulted me. I hit him. And he said, I'll kill you. When he said he'd kill you, was that because of something you'd said just then? Or was it based on another part of your life? Hey, Judge. What are you hiding, Captain? Who is it? It's Mountain. Let me call a doctor. No. 
That looks bad. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> that needs stitches or it won't heal. What's the matter with you? Uh, That's serious. Why don't you want a doctor? Because I am a Burmese. Doctors uh, don't care about that. Uh, I need a bandage. That's a knife cut. No, no, a nail, a nail. Sure, a nail. I know a knife cut when I see it. You don't want a doctor because doctors ask questions, right? Gloria. Don't, don't. Listen, I got a complete set of troubles I don't need anymore. Do me a favor and leave. I'm sorry, I don't like to act this way, but listen, I'm all alone. I got no friends. It's tough for me. Please. Do you have sisters? No. Brothers? No. I had four, four brothers. I want you to go away. Just go away. Where? Where? There is no place. Go back to your ship. My ship stays in the harbor for another day and a half. Well, listen, go any place you like, but just leave me alone. Hear me! They killed my brothers. I don't want to hear. Four young boys. The tenderest things in creation. They killed them. You killed somebody tonight. Don't send me away. Don't send me away. Brother. What are you made out of? One minute you're kissing me, then you go out killing somebody and... Let my brothers drown in the harbor. They could have saved my brothers. But they sailed away because to them four Burmese boys are no better than four dogs. These kids were beggars. You know, you find that in many ports. They come out in boats and they beg for whatever they can get. Anyway, a storm blew up and the boys broke their oar locks. In the heavy seas, I guess. Now, here's the thing. No law was broken. But morally, by the traditions of the sea, the captain should have picked those boys up and returned them to the beach. The captain testified that he radioed their people, told them that the boys were in trouble, and then sailed on out of the harbor. Claimed he couldn't maneuver. Anyway, the boys capsized and drowned. There was quite a fuss. The Rangoon people said he just didn't want to lose the day. They were pretty small boys. It was a miserable situation all around. Was there an Emery Follinger aboard the ship? Yes, he was the first mate. Well, what was the trouble between the first mate and the captain? Well, they both lost their jobs. Perhaps Follinger blames the captain. Did you fire them? It was a gross breach of courtesy. We couldn't be placed in a position of condoning it. We had to think of our relations with Rangoon. Do you have the names of the other officers aboard the ship? I can get them for you out of the log. Is that important? Well, it may be if they were on somebody's death list. I'll get them for you. Oh, and the addresses also. Our addresses may not be up to date, but uh, you can get the current ones from the Union. Four boys drowned, huh? I can see what the boozing's all about. I wouldn't want that on my conscience. Wait a minute now. I saw those boys. I saw them in the water and I radioed. I didn't think anything was going to happen to them. Don't you understand that? And there's nothing I could do. There was, there was, there was bad water. There was no sea room. And I had to think of the safety of the ship. That's my first responsibility, the ship. It was bad water, no sea room. Things like that happen. It, it happens sometimes. You have to, how do you think I feel? Stand there on a deck and watch these kids die like that? And it kills you, just breaks your heart to watch. And there's nothing you can do. They were kids, they were just babies. Uh. Okay, vengeance. Friend or relative for the boys. Takes a lot of money to come from Rangoon to New York. 
And I don't think any of these Burmese beggars or their friends or relatives have that kind of money. They could work, save, put their money away. Not in five short months. Well, maybe a lot of them put their money together. That happens. Well, let's say it did happen that way. But the immigration quotas for the Burmese are very low. They might get over here, but I don't think they'd get into the country. They could enter illegally. Well, there are ways of getting in legally. Visitors' visas. An official? A sailor. A sailor. I like a sailor. A sailor could get here with no money. And immigration issues passes to foreign sailors. They could walk in. I like that, Mike. Frank, call immigration. Find out if any Burmese sailors happen to be in port. Yes, sir. Yo, what do you mean? Why does he get only stand to dead? Where is me to the cat? I in the kiss keys. Oh, what paper, mister? What do you mean? She got white pointed with a knife. Get your newspaper. It's the wife with a knife. She kept his wife pointed at her own front door. Get your newspaper. The good juicy murder today. Wife pointed with a knife. Get your newspaper. It's the wife with a knife. She kept his wife pointed at her own front door. Get your newspaper. This is our man. Nice looking kids. I thought Buddhists were supposed to be the gentle people of the world. How can you be a Buddhist and kill? You can't be any kind of religion and kill. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. all the eating places in the Chelsea area, cashiers, managers, and so on. Do you know, Mike, I think he might be on to us by now. He may not even make a try for the ship. Where would he go? Uh, where can he go? Not far, that's for sure. Oh, Clayton, check with those cab companies again. Call the men at the bridges. You know, I'd like to box him in right here in Manhattan if we could. You know, there's always a possibility he's left town. Could be. your money. Here. You can go visit your mother. How long do you think you can go? They'll get you. But not here. Don't do that to me. It's all over the radio. They're looking for a Burmese sailor. I know. Gloria, Gloria, did you call me? She was innocent. It was a mistake, she was innocent. As my brothers were innocent. It was 
dark. I couldn't see. You should have that hand taken care of. It can poison your whole system. Why don't you let me call a doctor? You can die. Nobody will tell the police. I didn't say anything. You don't see any cops around here, do you? You've got to have that hand taken care of. You need attention. This is my friend, Mary. He's a very lovely guy. He's hurt. You can stay. so hard, Mother. I loved them. I loved them. I sent them all my money. I followed the holy path. I abstained from all pleasures of the senses. All my money. To the boys. All were in school. I was proud of that. I kept my promise. Good boys. I worked hard. I never complained. Mother, they're dead. I told them not to go begging in the harbor. I warned them. Built the boat. What could I do? I was away. Too much away. They're dead. Oh, little brothers. Oh, little brothers. Need you more, huh? I'm copied out. How would you like to be him roaming around out there? Far enough? 
wounded in a strange country. Feel sorry for the poor Joker, huh? He may be roaming around out there, but we'll get him. Now, because you have killed the wrong person, or because you have killed? I am a good man. We are all good men. How can it be that this woman is dead and yet she has done nothing? J Justice? How can it be that I have come across the world to no purpose? Justice demands. My friend, the path to serenity is through meditation. The Buddha life is within yourself. Will you meditate now? I will leave the world and fulfill the rules of the monk. I will seek a secluded dwelling in the forest, or on a mountain, or a rock cave, or a heap of straw. I will keep aloof from song or dance. I will reject flower or ointment. Only what is given will I take, waiting until it is given. My whole life is a lie. I don't know what else there is I can tell you, gentlemen. For a moment, I thought I had illuminated the nature of his problem for this man. I thought I had led him away from violence. Now I recognize the duality of the new problem, that I must help this man, if only I could. And yet, I must appeal to you to constrain this man, for if he should be allowed to continue in his violence, he tears open the very substance of his soul. But you don't know where he is now. I do not know that. We could constrain him a lot better if we knew where he was. I wish I could help you more. That puts us back to where we were before. Hitting stone heads against stone walls. Well, thank you, Reverend Nakamura. I pray your destiny may not lead you too into violence. Thank you. You know, Mike, I really don't think we are in the same position we were before. Is there any question in your mind that our Burmese friend will be going after Captain Barris? No question at all from where I stand. And look, why don't we turn the whole picture around? Wherever Captain Barris is, that's where our Burmese friend will be. That means we don't have to chase him. All we have to do is wait for him.
He's not gonna show. Let's wait a while longer, man. Plenty of zero, Betty. But I didn't want to waste a day. I didn't want to waste one day. I just wanted to get back to you so that I could love. He's not gonna show. All right, let's go, man. This has been one of them. Columbia Pictures, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.